Roger Clemens with us here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5, brought to you by the Daspit Law Firm to talk about what he saw last night. So, Roger, listen. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I mean, it's just, it's why it's a beautiful game. I mean, that is incredible. So, did, did, did you think McCullers learned something from that instead of throwing the <laughs> up there a bunch of, you know, curveballs and, and slower stuff? I mean, just overpower these guys? Well, yeah, that's Lance's, you know, but that's Lance's, you know, that's what he has in his arsenal. So you got to go with what you go with. And I tell you what, it was, uh, it, it just doesn't make sense sometimes. You know, the Phillies, five home runs, I think it tied a record, something like that. And then they come back and get no hit. Uh, you know, the Astro guys, you know, they, they've, I think, what, two or three times now they've had a combined uh, no hitter. I know they did it in Yankee Stadium. Uh, not too long ago, and I think Roy Oswalt was part of yep. one a, a while back. So uh, it was great to see. Uh, I guess he comes out, um, you know, when when uh, Javier comes out in the sixth inning, that, that may be uh, indication that short day rest, if it goes game seven, I don't I don't know. But, you know, his, his mechanics and his deception, or you want to say deception when the guy's throwing 93, 94 miles an hour, he's not throwing 100 miles an hour. And they they were late and fouling balls off, uh, uh, even in uh, you know hitter in fastball counts when they kind of knew a fastball was coming. So um, it was fun to watch, man. He kept them off balance, seventy two percent probably, maybe more on the on the fastball. And uh, but he's been doing it because I think they said like in postseason, um, guys are hitting like oh ninety five. So. Uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding with this guy. And uh, and the big thing that uh, I noticed was after the guy scored all the runs in the in the, uh, in the the fifth, he went out in the bottom of the fifth. And that's a huge zero, huge shutdown inning for him to put that up. Absolutely. Roger Clemens with us, brought to you by the Daspit Law Firm here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. And how about all the pop-ups, Roger? Is that just a product of they think the ball's sinking and it's just not? They just, they're just, they're late on it. Late on it, uh, some of them, and, and uh, you know, just again, it was, um, you know, he, his ball had had some extreme late life on it, the way they were swinging, because he, again, he wasn't lighting up the gun. You know, when they, when Philadelphia brought in Alvarado, you know, he's a power thrower. He doesn't pitch. He 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 relies on overpowering hitters, and it caught up with him this time. Uh, he hit Jordan. You know, you see Bregman when he chokes up. He chokes up on the bat uh, in those situations to just see if he can square the ball up, and he did. It was a, a, a nice, uh, just a great piece of hitting. And, um, you know, it was just it was, it was was fun to watch. The guys were getting it done. Like you said, there was a calmness. When we talked yesterday, you know, the belief that we all had that we were going to win at least one game, get it back to Houston, and uh, there was just a nice calmness to the guys uh, that, you know, hey, we've been here before. Kevin Long talked about uh, – so yesterday during the broadcast, Ken Rosenthal said he talked to Kevin Long, the hitting coach from Phillies, who you've referenced a couple of times. And uh, he said what makes Javier so tough is that his fastball seems to de- defy gravity and he doesn't get any any late sink. And that's why he said hitters' eyes are trained for fastballs to look a certain way. And when his doesn't have that – when his is able to, to seemingly stay on the same plane the entire way in – that's why they're on the bottom of the ball so often it turns into pop-ups. You know, Roger, we saw, I thought Roy O used to have a fastball that kind of looked like that where he could, where it just looked like it was on that same plane where it, it didn't move a whole lot. Mechanically, can you tell us the difference? Like, is it grip? Is it What, what is it that makes different, different pitchers have different types of four-seam fastballs, even if their velocity is the same? Yeah, you touched on it. I mean, it's, it's definitely um... – you know, again, when they're getting their pitch, their pre-pitch from the guys that are sending the signal to them, they can load that fastball, and you you, you absolutely have to have the proper grip on it, uh, where your where your your fingers are, are are on the baseball on part of the uh, the seams where you can really spin it. But it has to do with his left side, as far as I'm concerned. If you, if you were watching closely, um, his left side, he reaches out really well and pulls back with his uh, glove side. It's um, you know again that's our, that's our steering wheel if you if if it makes sense it's your quiet side your power side your back side but he reaches out and and like I talked just a minute ago and K Long is talking about the same thing when it gets to home plate 
it explodes. It's, it'd be like if you're a bowler and you throw that uh, that that you know the, the spin ball that yeah. right out there on the edge. It looks like it's going in the gutter and a, and it snaps back across for a strike. It's the same thing when the ball gets from the grass right in front of the hitter to that dirt. It explodes. It changes gears, and that's what causes the guys to hit that ball in the air. Does Verlant Roger Clemens with us here? Brought to you by Daspit Law Firm on ESPN 97.5 and ninety two five. Does Verlander change his approach because a lot of the damage that was done by the Phillies was on off-speed stuff? Does he change his approach after watching last night? It was off-speed stuff, John. It was off-speed stuff in the zone like McCullers too much. You know, usually Verlander features that ball in that upper upper tier of that strike box that you're going to see on TV. He has to live up there with some, you know, with some good stuff and then he comes back with that curveball down and um Hey, there's no doubt about it. He can throw a massive, a massive body blow uh, tonight and, and get the guys back home. So I'm, I'm hoping this is the night that um, that he really just, you know, five, six shutout innings like he's capable of doing, and uh, um, and keep that crowd quiet. This is, but yes, he can he can deliver a huge blow uh, to the Phillies. Roger Clemens with us this morning. Uh, he's with us after every playoff game. Brought to you by the Daspit Law Firm and. And you know we'll have you tomorrow, and then we're we're going to have you on that that Monday afterwards, either after a game six or game seven. We'll see how that goes. But um, from a hitting standpoint, they've played thirty five innings up to this point since one game only went eight innings uh, for them as hitters. They've had thirty five innings as hitters. They scored in five of those thirty five. In each of those, though, they did score runs in bunches with crooked numbers. Um, Raj, they've got to. I mean. At some point, they've got to start sticking multiple innings runs on on the Phillies, unless you're just going to simply outpitch them, which I guess is still possible. Well, you know, again, I had an opportunity in the second inning last night, had an opportunity in the fourth, and then uh, I got a little concerned in the fifth inning when we we couldn't get a bunt down. I was wondering if we're going to try and bunt, and Pena tried to get it down, couldn't get it down. I I just don't think the guys practice it enough. Right. Uh, to be sharp at it, and uh, but we ended up coming through. Um, Nola hung a breaking ball, which was I was surprised by the pitch call there when you when you think a guy might be bunting, but uh, he let him out of the trap by throwing that breaking ball, and that got that that whole inning started. Uh, the other thing that I was made aware of last night, and, and I'm sure you guys may have heard it too, was um, there were you know uh, Jordan is tweaking his stance a little bit. He's doing a lot of work, a lot of a lot of work on the field, and then behind the scene in the cages. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe maybe it's a, just a small tweak here or there that can get they can get him going. And uh, so uh, you know I'll be watching that close tonight again. Well, you you hit on it with the Bregman thing too. He choking up with two strikes and just going with that pitch. I mean, that you want to talk yeah. about a great – that might have been the best at bat uh, that we saw it's, in this World it's, Series. It's, yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's it's what made Barry Bond so difficult. Uh, you know, he had all that equipment up there and, and stood on the plate and choked up with a 34-33, and, uh, and he has nothing but barrel going through the zone. You have your entire barrel going through the zone. Some, for young kids, college kids, uh, even minor league guys to pay attention to, he – he is, uh, you know, he, he chokes up. He went up a little bit more because the guy was throwing 100 miles an hour, of course. And he's a, and like I told you earlier, he's a power thrower. And he made a mistake, and, and Bregman uh, just got plenty of bat on it, didn't rush, shot it over there in the corner. And that's difficult for a pitcher. I mean, that eats at you. It's, it's similar to when I'm facing a good left-hander and I'm, I'm working the, you know, the, the, the opposite side of the plate, and, and they shoot you to the opposite field. He tells me that they're having tremendous plate coverage. Yeah, Roger Clemens with us here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. I want to go back to the high fastball because that's where Verlander lives. How much did you – but but that's also why Verlander, even in his <laughs> young years, gave up a lot of solo homers because he likes to live upstairs. Be, but he's going to have to do that again tonight. Javier did that last night and got a lot of pop-ups out of it. How much did you like to you get those guys, your out pitch, up, uh, bring, bring that four seam upstairs? Yeah, I would love it even more because they right now the umpires concentrate. Um, there's more high strikes called because of the um, uh, uh, you know e- east and west. They pinch you a little bit north and south. They, they're they're expanding, and I would love that because I could feature you know 95, 97 up, and then my devastating split down. And you can't you just 
joggle the hitter's eye level. That's what you're supposed to do. Verlander will be able to do that with his curveball. Just got to kind of keep it out of the middle. Uh, like I said, well, you know, you saw with Lance, he was just he just left some kind of flat ones. They weren't really they weren't really biting as hard. So um, kind of left them in the middle a little bit. And uh, but you know, again, I'm going to be you know, be something to watch with JV. Uh, he can feature that high fastball, not in the nitro zone. You got to get it up there a little bit, uh, and and you got to get a couple calls. They missed a couple. Uh, they missed a couple high ones that were in the box of uh, Javier too. So mm-hmm. they got to they got they got to pay attention to it. Is there a shorter leash on Verlander tonight? The bullpen's so good. I mean, you, it's almost a luxury to have that if it, do, if it doesn't look like he's gone. But uh, again, he started off uh, really well last time, and and, um, and we talked about it. If you know, you let me settle in. If you just give me an inning or two to settle in. Uh, and of course, like you guys alluded to it, uh, if we can get some runs early, it'll make it a little bit easier for him. He can do some things that that he wants to do out there on the mound as far as pitch selection. So, um, but yeah, I think I think you go. This is a this is a this is a big body blow game right here. I mean, you can really hammer them. Uh, I'll be interested to see how the momentum with the Phillies, the guys come out after that. I mean, you're talking about emotional roller coaster. These guys are throwing bats in the air and high fiving and dancing when they hit homers. And then they come back and get no hit, man. It's crazy. <laughs> have, have you ever seen anything like yeah, that? That's fun. That's fun. You set a record, a postseason record for home runs off of one pitcher, and the next game you come back and you're involved in history again. Again, again. <laughs> Although Christian Javier was, uh, you know, uh, Roger, there's something to be said for a guy who just doesn't. This is now the either fifth or sixth consecutive start where he's allowed two hits or less. Um, Christian Javier. There's something to be said for, you know, pressure, and this is stuff that you could probably talk on all day. Pressure self created. We create pressure on ourselves. It's not a, it's not, it, it's, it's only bothers you as much as your own mentality allows it to bother you. This is a guy who doesn't feel like, sometimes I feel like Lance gets, the pressure can get to him a little bit unless he gets rolling early. But with uh, Christian Javier, and now Wandy, or I mean uh, Fromber, who I think has become really good at this, those guys just are able to settle in. I think JV's really good at that as well, despite what's happened in the, with the World Series. I think JV's also obviously excellent at it. Can you talk about how you can prevent yourself from from feeling nervous and 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 when something starts to go against you, when you start to have some adversity? Yeah, you're exactly right. He looked like Javier looked like it was just him and. And, uh, you know, his catcher out there, I mean, uh, nothing else mattered. I mean, he didn't even pay attention to what was going on on our offensive side of the, the ball. Nine punch outs. I think he had five in a row at one time. I mean, come on. He, he was just, he was just, he was in that. He had his blinders on, and that's what you got to do. Crowd was, <laughs> we, I was talking about how loud they were. You couldn't even hear them, man. They were reading books in the stands or something. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and so, but again, the, the fifth inning was a big shutdown inning, and I think total the guys had. I think our 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 pitchers had fourteen punch outs. So I mean, that's Matt. That's that's outstanding too. So, I mean, we got we got some quality arms. The guys come out of the bullpen look like they want to be in the game, and and uh, and they want to challenge these challenge these hitters. And, and um, so it's just good to see. I mean, like you said, you got to have that kind of. Uh, you know, you got to got to put your blinders on, slow everything down. You don't hear people in the stands. You, you know, I, there's been times when I was out there where Jeter would have to whistle at me twice to step off the rubber because he wanted to tell me something about a shift, or you know, he knew they knew my cadence, what I was going to throw, and I would step off and let them pre- re- reset themselves. But they would have to yell at you twice or something to step off because you're so locked in and ready to go and what you're doing, and that's the way Javier was. He could tell that they knew he as a position player could tell that they were locked into your cadence. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they, the, you know, most of the most of the middle infielders before you could have the electronic device in your hat, you know, they knew what I was going with. Sometimes I would change cadence in the middle of the game on whether what sign is live or what I was doing, and the middle infielders, they they were they all wanted to know what I was doing so they could they could slide one side, they could take a half a step one way or another without the hitter seeing them move. Because if you see the hitter sees them move to a pull side, they know I'm throwing something soft. So they would be real careful mm-hmm. in doing that. But it, it always helped them uh, gain a step or two on a hard-hit ball. So they wanted to pay attention to that, too. That's great stuff. 